Yo, what's going on YouTube? It's your boy, the D20 here, coming at you with the chapter reviews. Not gonna talk about timing, not gonna talk about when this is coming out. Look, it's coming out when it's coming out, had shit to do, you know, blah, 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 blah. But thank you for tuning in once again. Um, a little bit of news coming up. Um, chapters are gonna be out early this week. It's gonna be coming out this Friday on 1016. And I believe it's gonna be the return of Oda. So we're gonna have all three back in the building. But for today, we just got Black Clover and um, My Hero Academia. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get right into it. All right. And we're gonna start it off this week with Black Clover, page 267. The Devil Binding Ritual. Alright, we start off with a dope ass spread of the demon. Um, can't still can't remember Asa's dead devil's name. I don't think we've got it. But pretty much the devil, it's looking like it like how it does normally in the silhouette in the black silhouette, except its head's uncovered, so you can see its white flesh um, and its eyes, and everything's like pretty much a shadow except for the right arm, which is pretty much the way that Asta's was. Um, when he took over the power when he was fighting Dante and the devil even goes on to say that it's been a while since, since he's been in the physical world pretty much affirming that this ain't his first time being in the human world Asta looks on in surprise can't say it's horror surprise he knew he was being a devil so he shouldn't be surprised about this shit but um he tells him that so this is what he really looks like and that he's there's something that he's been wanting to tell him and honestly you're, what y'all gonna learn about me is I like some pretty weird shit when it comes to um, character interactions because this one is so fucking genuine he says thank you and Nox is just sitting there smiling and the devil he, can give, he gives this like what the fuck type look and then he's and the Asa goes on like during fights your power has saved me over and over and over again we flash to some of the um, some of the points such as when he used Black Divider, um, when it first happened, and just point after point after point where the devil has shown up and pretty much showed out and saved his ass. And he says it's thanks to you that he's even able to fight in the first place. And he says, he seriously, he seriously thanks him. And the devil goes on laughing at him and says, so you're gonna say this to the guy who took your right arm, you know, kind of chiding at him like, dude, I'm taking something from you. Why are you thanking me? But yet again, in this exchange that I love, well, that was the deal. I've got no complaints. So Asta, so Asta recognizes um, what his actions have in, would entail. He's like, I'm not mad at you. We had a deal. You said you wanted the arm. I gave you the arm. I can't say shit to you. This is what this is what we agreed on. To which the devil then goes on to tell him that he knew that he was a total idiot and that's why he's about to kill you. Asta then, you know, in typical Asta fashion, is like, I can't let you do that. And he then remembers their first conversation um, when he was, when uh, the devil called him short. So now we get a full body, or well, a better full full body view of the devil, you know, not from so, such a close up angle um, to where we can see him, kind of, it's kind of from the side. We can see he is short. Um, probably about the same height as Asta, as Asta puts it. And then Asta even says he doesn't want to get his butt kicked by somebody who's his height. The devil that goes on the last and then goes on to laugh and says that he doesn't understand his situation. To which he then moves Asa's grimoire, takes out the demon slayer sword, and levitates it as he's about to use it. He then strikes the Asa to which Asta dodges. And I was surprised when he swings it again. So he pretty much he's swinging the sword telekinetically and not actually wielding it in his hands. The devil then, then goes on to berate Austin. You walked into my turf and uh, at this time, it's not just gonna end with your arm being taken. I'm gonna take everything. Austin then, then goes on to tell him to hold on that he doesn't want to fight and he should just listen. To which not yet again looking plain face with a smile on his face from outside it just tells him fight he said he tells him that he came here to get stronger he questions himself he questions him telling him that he came here to get stronger and that defeating him is the only way and if he loses it's going to be his by his body that's going to be taken and he's going to become a grotesque monster kind of like how 
Lick did in the original timeline. Well, in the original time, um, when the devil first tried, when, hold up, it wasn't Magicula, it was, hell, I don't even know the name of the devil they fought in the um, L4, you know him. Even then, um, Lick turned to a hideous monster, so something like that is gonna happen to Austin. I even have a picture of it looking really lumpy and spiky and shit. And then he goes on to tell him that all of the bones that he sees within the altars, because they're because they're full of skulls, are bones of people who tried the devil binding ritual but were never able to conquer it. And then not tells him that that if he loses, that's what's gonna happen to him. He's just gonna you know take his skull, put it, put it in the altar, and keep it pushing. We then see a picture. It looks it looks kind of like an ancient picture of three hooded figures subduing devils we can see one in the middle pretty much with his hands outstretched with the devil having three chains attached to stakes in the ground one to, to that put to that man's left with a scythe at the devil's throat and another with the devil shackled with the devil's arms shackled wings beaten and a spear held above it asa then looks at him and says isn't this for and thinks to himself isn't this forbidden magic and to which he then says out loud, hey, isn't this something we're not supposed to be doing? To which Nock replies, we have two days to get you strong enough to fight these devils. We, did you really think we were gonna be able to do this the normal way, the above ground, well, the, the above the belt way? Not happening. Shit's gonna have to be what it is. He said that this is the world he had to enter because he has no magic. To which the devil continues to attack Asta and then knock yet again, showing a little bit of irritation towards Asta. Well, not uh, showing irritation towards Asta, even though not outwardly showing it, except with his eyes. Because Asta, this whole time, has been doing nothing but dodging the devil's attacks. He hasn't fought back or even tried. Now, yet again, he does only have one arm, but still, Asta's a pretty buff dude. He can fight back if he wants to, to which Asta says no. He then tells him that he's been reading his key and that he doesn't actually, he can tell the devil doesn't actually want to kill him. To which Noct, yet again, showing slight disdain for Asta's words and actions, tells him that his, that his opponent is a devil and that there's no such thing as a devil with, with morals. To which the devil laughs and agrees and says that he's right and every devil is a total scumbag. And then Asta thinks to himself, remembering the devil that he fought months prior, he, and he tells himself, this, you aren't like him. The devil then goes on to say he's going to steal your body, and then Asta breaks him down with his next statement. Just because you're a devil doesn't necessarily mean that you're a bad guy, to which the devil freezes, and then the chapter ends with the devil looking on at Asta as a as he sees and remembers a figure from his past and he says damn it and he remembers a woman who actually kind of looks like Asta pointing to him saying that you aren't a bad guy and that is page 267 of Black Clover definitely like the chapter we're getting more and it's seeming like this whole ritual there's more to it than just like, oh yeah, we, yeah, we just discovered this. It seems like this is something. And even from the picture of the devils that are, that in the, in the picture it's showing devils being subjugated. I'm gonna go ahead and say this now. I think kind of the key to all this is gonna be Asta being the type of person who doesn't use devils. Because from the picture that I described to you earlier, it seemed like this, the way this has always been done, the way humans have always worked with devils has always been that the devils have been subjugated by force. They've never been given a choice. They've pretty much been enslaved by the humans. But in order to truly draw out the power of the devils, it's it gonna take more of a symbiotic approach to which Dante and them may be on because if Luciferio, Dante's devil is the most powerful, I doubt somebody beat him. So I guess they're doing more of a, hey, we're, we're both crazy, we're gonna do this. And Asa's actually gonna take the friendship route. Because what's probably gonna happen is, and I'm calling this now, Dante and the others, they're working for this world where only the strong survive, like, like they say, but what's gonna end up happening are the devils are gonna get what they want, potentially. And then they're just gonna say, fuck y'all, and we're gonna rule everything. And Asa's gonna have to beat him alongside the devil 
fighting as a team rather than just two individuals who seemingly have have a strong goal but yeah as far as the chapter goes this is definitely setting something up especially since asta looks like the devil and also looks like this woman so potentially this friday we could be getting asta's backstory because with you know being a prince asta is still up in the air we don't know anything about him but with that that's my little discussion on page 267. Next up, My Hero Academia. Next and finally for this week's Shonen Showdown, My Hero, My Hero Academia. Number 287, Mistake. Chapter starts with Deku in his partially ethereal form, um, being, uh, being, I don't know, uh, not accosted, but rather being helped by Nana Shimura who we then get another full body image and Nana is um not only toned but she uh she is kind of thick. Yeah. <laughs> Kidding. I mean about the being creepy, but no, she is thick. But anyway, so she stands before the amalgam of Shigaraki and all for one in the ethereal world. To which Deku, you know, noticing, you know, he can't talk, so he's thinking most of this. Hey, that's Nana Shimura. And then thinking that we're inside one, we're inside the world of one for all. But he's wondering what's happening on the outside world. To which all one for all, which I'm trying not to get that confused, look, looks on at Nana and Deku Sao. Yeah, looks on at Nana saying, look. Tamura, there's a dead person who happens to be your grandmother. The pathetic, incompetent Nana Shimura stands before us. To which she looks a bit annoyed at all for one calling her that. He then goes on to say that they're in the middle of transplanting the power. Um, to which Deku's kind of surprised, like he questions what's happening, non-verbally of course. All for one, they go on to say there are stories of people whose personalities and tastes change after an organ transplant. Though it sounds rather occult, there's plenty of evidence, of, of supporting evidence. As for me, I'm prone to the oddest dreams from time to time. In my dreams, those whose quirks I've stolen show up to hurl abuse my way. These episodes often leave me discouraged. I am, really, am I really incapable? Am I really capable of feeling guilt for my sins like some utterly ordinary person? But here's the strangest part. Once I get rid of a quirk, its former owner stops haunting my sleep. Bizarre? No, especially since I'm certainly the type to hold a grudge myself, but my work with our doctor revealed the root cause. Just as organs and cells house memories of sorts, every quirk factor contains a consciousness, the, indiv the individuality of its user, if you will. As someone with the power to meddle with quirks themselves, I found myself in the unique position of being able to interact with those consciousnesses. Of those consciousnesses. Anyway, you, 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 you get what I'm saying. You, you get what I'm saying. Tomura then looks on and remembers Gran Torino telling him not to trample on her memory. He and then flashes back to his childhood, seeing pictures of her and even earlier on, see, when he was first um, awakening his full power, her grabbing at him from behind. Then he I, tries to ask, what were you? My blood kin too, my little brother, all for one goes on to interrupt, who had the power to grant his own quirk to another could also meddle with quirks directly. When his original quirk mixed with the power stocking one, the resulting power became a sleeper car to carry consciousness forward to future generations. Anyhow, wouldn't you like to say hello? And then Nana looks on at Tomura and asks him, is he Kotaro, her son's child? And then he said, then Tomura answers, no matter how we got here, grandma, you can rest assured that I also hate you with all my heart. The world of One for All begins to crumble and erode thanks to Tomura. And which 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 all for all for one, yes, I actually got that one right, 
good. He tells Homer that it's good. His hatred is making its mark, and it uh, and it's allowing him to crumble the world. The rule is that only the will of one for all's wielders can affect it, but your rage is starting to eat away at that very rule. So his hatred is strong enough to where he's interacting with the world he really shouldn't be able to. All for one, then we then see like lines, kind of like the, the designs that are on the tendrils that he spit, that he shoots out, start to appear on his body and neck. He then turns to Tomoda and says, whoops, I nearly forgot. You hate me too. All the better. How fitting for the symbol of terror. But it's still not enough, it seems. We then see the younger Shigaraki brother, because remember, that is one for all, uh, all for one's true name, Shigaraki, his last name at least. But he then goes on to state that his brother is just as obstinate as he is. So the younger Shigaraki brother then asks, is that boy the next in line? He then goes on look on look on to his, to his little brother. It's a shame that I can never make you mine. His brother then holds out his hand, saying, "We says that they will never go to you. We have chosen to remain within this boy." He then and then the corrosion is up, and then the corrosion starts to retreat because of the will of Nanashimura and the younger Shigaraki. He then, and as Shigaraki sees his power being beaten back, he then goes on to state that one for all is the one power that never behaved the way all for one wanted it to. Then one for all, well, all for one, excuse me, yet again, that's gonna happen. He then reaches out, telling Tomoda to show some power. And then he asks him to combine he, uh, Tomura's strength with his own and we can steal them away. They are but a couple of departed people who fell to me. Brother, you claim you've chosen this. No point in bluffing when I know the truth. I've seen it all through Tomura's eyes. He then goes on to berate Deku. He says that the incredible power has been wasted on him. And goes on to chide him, ch uh, not chide, but chastise him for not being able to defend his teacher nor his friend. And then he even goes on to state that he's given himself over to blind rage. He and going on to say that Deku was worthless and giving that power to him was a mistake. And then another interaction that I love, like these chapters um, both had interactions that I really, really like um, because they did, they not necessarily go against the tropiness of anime, but in a lot of things, um, this instance in My Hero Academia, you know, hey, you can't like pretty much the pro the protagonist. You know, you gotta conquer your rage, and that's good. But they make it seem as though you can't, you can never be angry, at least to a point. And I love that the younger Shigaraki brother says this. No, it wasn't. Someone who exploits people like you can never understand what drives this boy to shed blood. He rages for the sake of others. For them, he does his best until he can do no more. This young man is possessed by a drive to save others that eclipses all common understanding. Our power is his, and we shall follow him. It's pretty much saying, well, not pretty much, but saying that, yeah, he's angry. He gave himself over to rage, but he never did so of his own, uh, of, of his, well, not of his own volition, but of his own reasoning. No, not that's not the word I'm looking for. He never did so on his, for his own sake. That's what, that, that's the phrasing I was looking for. Deku's doing this for, for everybody else. He's thinking not of himself. He's thinking of beating ass and getting mad for everybody else around him who may not be able to exact um, to act as in a way act in a way that he would. So the younger Shigaraki is ju is justifying his anger. He's not getting angry for his own sake. He's angry for everybody else. His drive to save is what is what is driving him to these extremes, which is justifiable and hell even commendable. They then snap back as Deku lunges forward. They then snap back to where both Shigaraki and Deku are looking horrible in midair and flying away from each other. Deku then questions whether or not Shigaraki could steal his quirk, but saying that he couldn't. One for all, or all for one then comes to Tomura tell, telling him that he can't lose now, that he must get away and recover 
so that he could be so he can have the chance to steal one for all so it seems that due to one for all being special it can't be it one, well, one for all, all for one and one for all being pretty much the core powers one all for one may be able to steal one for all but only in its peak condition so one so all for one is telling Tomura to leave so that he can you know steal that power another day and him losing here will only disrupt their plans Deku then look, looks on looking he's bleeding um, out of his mouth his nose he looks like his face has been cut he doesn't want Tomura to start moving again because probably because he didn't he knows that he can't stop him now we then cut over to the destroyed city with that's being destroyed by Makina on top of him with Dobby and the others. Dobby saying Shigaraki, noting how Shigaraki is fighting Endeavor and that, they, and that they should start preparing. To which one of the others, I think one of the guys who was in the Liberation Army asked them, what are they preparing for? And Dobby, looking quite gleeful, says to tear down this fake hero society. And then Compact asks Toga, you know, as she's looking on the onto the destruction, are, is she fine with this? And he says that, and he says that he knows she's been scanning for them, the people she's looking for. He then goes on, she then goes on to say, where do they draw the line? She then says the heroes are supposed to save people, then was Jin not considered a person? Will they kill me too? And she then goes on to say, that's what I want to ask Izuku and Ochako. Depending on the answer, I'll be fine. And that is it for My Hero Academia 287. Uh, not a bad chapter. Um, slowed down a bit from the last like five weeks, but My Hero Academia has been on a fucking run for like a month and a half, two months. So it's cool, you know, hey, well actually no longer than that, probably closer to three or four months. They've been on a run. But yeah, I mean, it's cool. Um, I thought we we're gonna get some more about the pa the past uses of one for all, but you know that didn't happen. Especially with Bakugo keeping, especially how Bakugo kept flashing back to how All Might wouldn't talk about the fourth user. But yet again, it's not too late. The story's not over. We can still get that. Um, yeah, just and now with the revelation that one f that all, one for all can be stolen by all for one. Um, yet again, all for one is the source quirk for it, and then the theory about quirks being things that have their own that carry the conscience of their user. Very interesting, and it definitely explains um, why the vestiges exist, and that may explain why All Might isn't th isn't really there because he is he himself is quirkless. So of course he didn't pass down a quirk, so he's only partially there. So, if there, let's say the next user one for all after Deku, um, and here's the quirk. Deku and All Might may only be partially there. They they may be like super ghosts. Everybody else like, hey, they can talk to him um, from time to time, but Deku and All Might might not be fully there. But definitely interesting. Um, it's definitely interesting interesting to see where this is going because um, yet again, what happened to Bakugo and Endeavor? Are, do they have their quirks? Are they dead? What's going on there? Um, definitely interesting chapter. Um, can't wait for Friday. That's definitely going to be something interesting. But anyway, on to the awards. All right, ladies and gentlemen, and now we are coming to the point in the video where we give out the awards. Yet again, there are only two this week. Um, no, like, one shot or anything I want to talk about, so it's just these two. But, for the first time, I may have to give the gold. Is it the first time? Yeah, I think it's the first time. It's the first time? This is the first time. This is the first time. I don't know. It might. It, it. It. It might be the first time. I'm not entirely sure. But anyway, the um, the first place goes to Black Clover. Pretty much. I don't know. Just that exchange of Austin just being trying to be so genuine with with the demon. I like shit like that. It's like you know, hey, bruh. Yeah, you might not be um aesthetically pleasing, but I fuck with you. You helped me. I'm not gonna try to, you know, mess with you. And then. Like I said, the, when I was talking about the chapter itself, that picture and the fact that this place exists, the way Nox's attitude towards it, and then at the end, the uh, demon, you know, remembering somebody talking to him, or at least maybe somebody he was possessing or some shit, 
it's interesting. Like, I think they're, I think we're about to get a whole new paradigm for, you know, WEG, what's happening with the Spade Kingdom. We're like demons and their, demons and their relationship to humanity and who they are. And I think it might kind of be an elf situation where the demons might have been misunderstood and humanity may have acted out of a sense of fear. So, and well, well that and I think I think My Hero Academia just like to you know clear that up. I think they're but on the downturn. Um, I don't know. I just think like the, their most interesting shit, at least the majority of it, has already happened. So I think you know chapter the the My Hero Academia chapter this week wasn't bad. It was not a bad chapter by any means. But it's like eh, it was it wasn't as interesting as it could be. It did have some interesting concepts, but I definitely think Black Clover took it this week. Um, but yet again, I'm an info dump person and certain info dumps, um, interest me and certain ones don't. So my hero academia brings up the silver while black clover holds the gold and you know, black and gold definitely go good together. But anyway, ladies and gentlemen, that's going to be it. This week's episode of Shonen showdown. Um, definitely remember to like, comment, subscribe. Tell me what your, um, favorite moments were. Do you agree with my assessments? Um, yeah, de definitely check me out. I have my streaming information in the description below as well as my socials. And that's it for me. See you guys.